at the boarding house his eyes were fixed on the document but completely unseeing he turned the pages and reread all the words without assimilating a single one his eyes had turned inwards and all he could really see were the memories crowding inside his head nudging each other for ascendancy the unassailably true real world was inside his head this world was true he knew because he'd lived it then if that was true and he knew it to be so how could this paper he held in his hand represent reality also yet the smart young lady who had just left had assured him it did he charged her with playing games with him in his time of greatest grief but she'd assured him she was in deadly earnest she'd even berated him gently it was good news the very best news and he should rejoice not make himself miserable over it she'd left a copy of the document for him to study madhav was more completely boggled than he'd ever been he was a simple man not mentally simple no he was clever enough that way his needs were simple his looks were plain his life was routine his savings were precarious but with careful husbanding they'd see him through his job was ordinary he was an accountant beavering over his rows and columns with his stub of a pencil r upon earnest r he didn't deem it a drudgery he liked figures there was something dependable and honest about them he'd lived in small rooms in boarding houses his whole adult life the other boarders had been similar plain ordinary men like him 11 years ago he'd arrived at singa house and been allotted a room on the top floor it was a perfectly ordinary room with faded curtains and a single bed a sturdy desk and chair and a serviceable cupboard but it was clean and functional and he could comfortably afford it his solitary window faced east and he loved to watch the early morning light flood his tiny chamber with its golden glow it was a simple pleasure and he paid nothing extra for it the service and cleanliness standards in singa house were markedly above the other places madhav had stayed at for which he was deeply grateful the food was another delightful discovery even madhav the most unfussy of diners recognized that it was plain food but prepared with care and it tasted heavenly to this undemanding man he felt a quiet satisfaction that he'd been so lucky as to get a room here there was one more thing above all these that set singa house apart it had a lady boarder and what a grand and mysterious lady she was he didn't see her at first since her meals were carried up to her suite on a covered tray he knew only that she often invited one or other of the boarders to dine with her the food was the same as downstairs but the setting was more stylish with music and an elegantly laid table the men all eagerly awaited these invitations finally he received his call and having ironed his shirt and trousers carefully and dabbed cologne on his cheeks he presented himself at her door with a small bouquet and was knocked sideways when he actually saw her that first time and recognized her instantly who wouldn't she was karuna devi goddess of the silver screen the very last word in elegance grace and serene beauty and the newer girls couldn't hold a candle to her in his opinion even the passage of years hadn't dimmed her beauty in his eyes in fact the slight gauntness of age revealed that magnificent bone structure more starkly 
and he was struck dumb with awe. Downstairs, she was referred to respectfully only as the lady. So how was he ever to have imagined that the enigmatic lady boarder would be Karuna Devi? How terrible that she was so sadly reduced, so big a star. She welcomed him and seated him comfortably and they chatted about his life and work while he kept joking back expressions of how much he admired her. She must be so fed up of fawning men. Her apartment was more elaborate than his, but only marginally. There was a tiny living room and a dining room, both plainly furnished. There were no silver-framed pictures of herself in her heyday, and you'd never have known she'd once been the toast of the nation, for she had no la da ways. She was charming and a sweet hostess, and most friendly, even to poor, simple, nothing-to-look-at Madhav. He learned that she didn't spend the whole day cloistered in her apartment. At 11 a.m. every weekday morning, a car picked her up and dropped her back at 4.30 in the evening. Most of the men were at work at those times. The capped and uniformed chauffeur had been questioned but had revealed nothing. Respecting her evident desire for secrecy, none of the men had gone further with their investigations, however much they burned with curiosity. Madhav took his seat at her table by turn every month. Their conversations ranged over life and politics, the movies, music, international affairs, sport. She asked about his work life, even random details like troublesome colleagues and the youngster who served at the office canteen. When she had wormed these inconsequentials out of him, he couldn't say. But she seemed to have a running life story of all his contacts in her head. She didn't speak much of herself, present or past, but got him to do most of the talking. Almost a year passed in this pleasant way, when he unexpectedly received an invitation twice in the same month. He presented himself, as requested, and soon it was twice every month that he was invited to her rooms. He never said a word to any of the other boarders, And as nobody noticed his movements, it passed uncommented. He didn't have the courage to take a nightly roster of his fellow boarders to see if he were the only one or if others too were similarly favoured. Then it grew to every week. And there was no way such a regular absence could be kept secret. They accosted him downstairs. But he was so evidently nonplussed himself that he was released unharmed. If it was the lady's own plan, who could challenge that? For Madhav to just sit in her presence was a joy, let alone to chat with her, to dine with her, to share squares of chocolate from the round tin into which she occasionally broke a large bar of Cadbury's dairy milk. She always dressed in bright cotton saris, except in winter, when she wore luminous silks and plain shawls. Her hands moved as gracefully as they had decades ago when he'd looked up adoringly from the cheap seats in the cinema. Her gestures were unchanged by time, her posture as serene, though her step had become slower. Her hair, snow where it had been jet, nestled smoothly in a bun and rimless glasses now perched on her nose. They became the fondest of friends. He no longer came only at dinner time on his scheduled Saturday, but spent the whole evening in her chambers. At least twice a week, other boarders continued to be invited to share her table, and everyone settled, resentfully but surely, into the new routine. Madhav observed in himself a strange and unusual sensation of contentment, even happiness. And he cherished it, even if he never fully understood it. One Saturday evening, Karuna Devi asked him, as casually as she asked after his work or the weather, if he would consent to marry her. World just stopped spinning for Madhav. He could hear the question echoing inside his head, but he couldn't believe he'd heard it. The 
doubt and concern on her face made him realize that she was anxious for his answer and he hastily babbled that it would make him the happiest man on earth but may he be permitted to ask what made her choose someone like him she smiled archly and told him that must remain her little secret otherwise he'd get a swollen head so suffice it for him to know that she was honored and delighted he'd accepted even though she was his senior by a few years she solicitously checked whether he'd want her to shift into his room and he hurried to reassure her that she'd not need to make any such sacrifice her rooms were infinitely better and he would do the shifting but she insisted he retain his room too to have a refuge to retreat to whenever he wanted and he grew red with confusion and embarrassment she planned everything down to the last detail and in only a few weeks they were husband and wife madhav was dazed he couldn't understand his incredible good fortune his life was an ocean of bliss she made no demands of him his daily presence seemingly being enough to fulfill her he went to work every day as before she also maintained her daily routine it wouldn't have occurred to him to question it after a few months of their marriage she resumed the invitations to the borders and on those evenings madhav diplomatically opted to eat downstairs with the rest and afterwards retired to his old room so as not to appear to be looking over their shoulders and in this strange and unlikely fashion karuna devi and madhav retained their marital happiness and also restored harmony amongst the gentleman borders of singa house the years went by and the unlikely couple found an unexpected sweetness in their twilight years they were infinitely kind and gentle and loving with each other he adored her of course for there was much to adore in her no one knew what she saw in him but she knew and that was enough for them until late one night when madhav awoke unexpectedly and immediately felt something was wrong the room was too still and too silent and he knew without knowing how he knew that karuna devi had left him the little man fell apart there's no other way to describe it he could do nothing not even cry it was left to the other boarders all shocked and red eyed themselves to take charge and manage all the arrangements the house was shrouded in sadness and gloom madhav moved back into his spartan bachelor quarters he couldn't bear the sight of her rooms without her shining presence he went there weeks later only to meet the lawyer lady who'd phoned and made an appointment because it would have been unseemly to invite her into his own room according to her karuna devi had been not just a boarder like all the other boarders albeit with bigger quarters she'd also owned the whole building and several others like it throughout the city she'd managed everything from an office which is where she'd gone every weekday she'd been determined that her boarding houses should be the best in the city giving decent working men a good life of affordable elegance and she'd finished with the limelight and preferred the simple life so for all her personal wealth she'd opted to reside in one of her own boarding houses and she'd kept it all from him madhav because she hadn't wished to embarrass him by parading her wealth in front of him but now she was gone and everything was his she'd left it all to him with her love and her thanks for the golden years they'd shared and he still couldn't wrap his head around that <laughs>